everyone and welcome to this first video of the graph theory course. In this short video I will give an introduction to what graph theory is and say a few words about what it can be used for and what sorts of questions we will be looking at in this course. This course is quite fast-paced but you will see lots of interesting math and hopefully also lots of interesting applications so come along. So what is graph theory? Before answering this question, let's start with a party trick, since anyway, this is a spring course. Unfortunately, parties are not a thing nowadays, but let's assume that we are in a position where we can gather six people in a sort of lockdown size party. Now, what graph theory can tell you, and this is a neat party trick, is that in any gathering where there are six people at least, you can be sure that either there is a group of three people who all know each other, or there is a group of three people who are total strangers to each other. So none of these three knows anyone else of these three. And this is something we will be able to prove using the language of graph theory. By the way, you can also ask a bonus question. How large gatherings do you need to have to guarantee that instead of three people, you can say the same about four people, either knowing each other or being total strangers, or maybe five people or six? Well, surprisingly, it turns out that already such simple questions are open research problems. We don't know the answer to these problems. So there are lots of exciting stuff going on, but let's go slowly ahead. So when you hear the word graph, you might be thinking of graphs as you have seen in calculus. So where you have some axes and then you have a function graph. So maybe it looks like this, but this is not the kind of graphs we are going to study. This is not what we mean when we say graph theory in the context of this course. What we mean is rather something like that. So a graph will consist of dots, even known as nodes or vertices. And these nodes will be connected or not by lines known as edges. And so you can have multiple edges between two dots. You can have nodes that have no connection to the other edges. You can have loops and all sorts of things. So this is what we mean by a graph. And it looks silly. As you can see on this uh, picture, it looks like a children's drawing. But really, this is a very useful concept. And you can say lots of things with graph theory. So let's take a look at some examples where graph theory is used. Okay, so graphs can be used whenever you want to visualize the idea of, say, traveling somehow or connecting dots. So one typical example is any sort of a road map. So here we have a train map over France. So this map shows you the uh, high-speed trains in France. Now, France have, has uh, some of the uh, most excellent high-speed trains in the world. And here you can see how they connect different cities. So in this graph, the nodes are the various cities of France where there are trains, and the edges are the train connections. This map illustrates something interesting about graphs. First of all, not all nodes are created equal. So there are some cities like, for example, Paris that are well connected to everything else and some cities that are not connected at all. So the number of edges at a given vertex or a given node plays an important role. Another uh, notion is the notion of distance. So here you can see these two cities are fairly close to each other, but it doesn't matter because there is no train between them, so you still have to travel far from one to the other by train. Another uh, popular graph is the internet. So you can imagine every user of the internet as a node, and the sorts of connections 
between users as edges. So uh, one node here represents uh, maybe an IP address or a web page, and the edges can represent anything from who links to whom to who is connected to what server and so on. In this day and age, uh, one thing that everybody talks about is this novel coronavirus. And of course, graphs are important to understand how that works. So for example, this graph shows the spread in the world and which directions the virus has spread with people traveling from one place to another. But you can say more, you can uh, look at more detailed information. So this graph is a bit strange. It shows different genetic samples of the virus and the uh, tree that you are looking at right now shows how they have evolved one from the other or how they are related one to the other. And indeed, uh, genomics and genetics is a field where graph theory is used quite a lot, as you will see later on. These are just a few uh, practical applications of graphs and uh, we will mostly be looking at the theory behind them but once in a while we will look into a special application and apply the theory we have learned. So what sorts of questions would you ask about graphs? So there are various interesting questions that you can ask about graphs and the first we're going to look at is what types of graphs are there? How do they differ? What do they look like? What does it mean for a graph to be directed, connected, finite, infinite, and so on? Second, we'll walk along graphs. Now, why would you want to walk along graphs? Uh, for example, if you want to plan a route that would be the least costly or the most efficient way to travel in a certain way. Uh, there is deep theory about that. We'll go into Eulerian graphs and Hamiltonian graphs and all that. Then we'll talk about trees like the phylogenetic tree that I showed you of the uh, virus uh, genomes. So uh, these trees are somehow skeleton of graphs. You can think of them like that. And they give you information about searching databases organizing data in other ways, and so on. We will then move on to the topic of graphs that can be drawn on a plane surface. These graphs are extra nice, so the first question to ask is how do they look like, and what can you say about them? Also, a lot of information can be obtained by coloring the nodes and edges of graphs in various ways. So we'll look at graph colorings, this will help us answer the party trick question in the beginning of this video. These are some of the topics that we will look at. And in the first few videos, we will start with the definitions and the uh, various types of graphs.